self belief comes from self love right the minute you fall in love with yourself is the day the world will fall in love with you almost 40% of the people they are harmed by spinach almost one third of the people are harmed by broccoli making money is a by product of doing things that actually make people's life better this is the way to live healthy for long long time Evan, how are you, brother? And here he is, the one and only Naveen Jain in the house. As a result of what I do, I've interviewed tons of people, done profiles and tons of people, and my community always tells me who they want me to do next. And when your name first came up a couple of years ago, I didn't, I didn't know who you were. And uh, I looked at some of your content, and there's only been three people that I've ever looked at and then said, oh my gosh, I love this person. I need to dive deeper into their, into their content. And you were one of those three people. And so it's, like, it's amazing to have you here. I love your energy. Thank you for the content. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for encouraging people to, to care more, to feel more, to do more, to be bigger. And uh, it's an honor to have you here talking with us. honor to be with you. And it's really hard to get a brown guy to blush. But when you say all these kind things about me, it makes me blush. <laughs> 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 I love it, man. So, I mean, there's so many ways to go, but I think one of the things that I love yeah. about you is the idea of the moonshot and that concept of just taking uh, taking your big shot. Most people settle for a small life. They settle for small goals and they end up being unhappy. And you're the exact opposite. You're full of life, full of happiness, full of it. Every time I've seen you, full of energy and going after big things. So what yeah. is... A moonshot. I know you've written a book on but it, but for you, what, how would you describe the moonshot? A problem or a goal or a mission that most people on the surface believe is impossible, if not very difficult to get. And these moonshots are the problems. When you actually solve them, it helps billions of people live a better life. So that means a, your moonshot is something some people call that you're not star. Someone that, you know, you every day you wake up in the morning, you jump out of the bed wanting to do that. And, you know, to me, I find energy not in about the work that I'm doing, but the outcome of that work that I'm doing. I every day, bar none, seven days a week, I get up at 4 a.m. with the joy of I'm doing the work that makes me happy. And, you know, we in this Western society, we have this concept of something or someone when I achieve that will make me happy. And in Eastern philosophy, it's about once you find the true happiness that's inside you of doing the things, it's a karma, it's the action you take that gives you that happiness. And it doesn't matter how far you push that boundary, even if you never achieve that ultimate goal, but you push it farther enough that someone else will come and stand on your shoulder and take it across the finish line. Guess what? That is a success that you can all be proud of. I mean, I love how you bring it home. The first time I, I heard of the concept was when I was reading a book yep. um, by Ted Turner and his father, when he was, uh, when Ted Turner was like in his early twenties, his father was in the advertising business yep. and he had a goal to be a millionaire, have a million dollars in my, in my business. And he did, and he hit his goal. And then his father killed himself the next day because he realized that, He's still the same guy and it wasn't a big enough goal. So then Ted Turner decided, I'm yeah. going to set a goal so big that I never hit it in my yeah. life because we're, we're, we want to play a big game that we're chasing forever. Um, and so I, I love how you just kind of, we label it moonshot. We're taking our big ideas and big yeah. dreams. And for my audience as entrepreneurs, they want to go and do big things. So yeah. let's workshop yeah. it maybe. So I think about what I'm trying to do. I think lack of belief is the world's number one problem. I think people don't believe in themselves. I think everybody has... I call it Michael Jordan level genius at something and whatever problem, cancer, yeah. whatever it is, you know, the woman who solves cancer should have already solved it, mm -hmm. but she's an accountant mm -hmm. at an, an accounting firm yeah. hating her life instead of chasing down her dream. So yeah. if that's my moonshot or well, first, is that, would you consider that a moonshot? Ultimately the moonshot solve? is something if successful. So you ask yourself, God forbid, I'm actually successful in solving the problem that I call my moonshot. Would it help a million people, 100 million people, a billion people live a better life? And the reason you ask for that is anytime you can build a product or a service that helps a billion people live a better life, you can create a $100 billion company, $500 billion company. And that is the goal. Making money is a byproduct of doing things that actually make people's life better.
making money should never be a goal in itself. It's always a byproduct, right? You know, I, I may say so because my wife hates my saying that, you know, making money is like having an orgasm. If you focus on it, you're never going to get it. So you just have to enjoy the process. <laughs> <laughs> okay i mean i love that uh so shout out to your wife as well uh you know but so yeah. so taking it taking that goal right so if i want to sell yeah. the world's biggest people don't believe themselves so enough. the problem is not then what not believing in themselves there are a couple of things the people either have a mindset of scarcity so they believe that or, or mindset of abundance the mindset of scarcity says that everything is finite if someone else has it, I can't have it. Or if I have it, someone else is going to be deprived of it, right? In a mindset of abundance, you say everything is so much that we all can have enough of it. And people say, how is that even possible? But look at air. Air is so abundant that we never have to slap the person next to us. Hey, you, you took a deep breath. That was my air. Why is that? Because we inherently believe the air is in abundance. That means it's democratized and it's demonetized. Now, everything that we think about that's scarce today is actually in abundance. It's in our mindset we believe it's not. Energy. Every 90 minutes, more solar energy falls on this planet than we use in the whole year. Simply a matter of conversion of the uh, solar energy into a useful form. And it's like same thing that happened to the aluminum. It was abundant on Earth, but it was never available in a pure form until the technology called electrolysis came about that made it abundant, right? Now, what is going to be the electrolysis of solar energy that's going to make it abundant? And it's going to be plentiful. That means it's going to be democratized and free. And when you have free energy, you can have free, fresh water, which is another big problem facing the humanity, right? People have dirty water. And if you have free energy, you can distill the water, you can desalinize the water. And suddenly when you have free, fresh water, you can have abundance of food, abundance of crops. So point I'm trying to make is that land, people fight over land and you look up. We are just a tiny dot in our own solar system. Our solar system is a tiny dot in our galaxy. Our galaxy is invisible in our universe, right? And our universe may be invisible into the multiverse. So the point is, where is that scarcity? The other thing that stops entrepreneurs from succeeding is they are afraid that they may, their idea may not work. And what I find amazing is you, as an entrepreneur, you have to be alive. And the only way you know you're alive is you have a heartbeat, goes up and down and up and down. That means in life, when you don't have ups and downs and you're looking for a smooth life, what are you looking for? Life of a dead person, right? So people have to accept that there are going to be downs. People have to expect them and accept them when they happen. Or when something happens, don't assign it a label of good or bad. Simply say, it happened. Universe is my friend. That means everything that happens, happens for a good reason. That means it is in my benefit that this happened, whatever that is. And then when you have that attitude, you keep pushing forward with every hurdle you get. I love it. I love yeah. it. Well, so let me, let me pick your brain further on that. If, yeah. if you were to build a business around yeah. democratizing self-belief, what would you, what would you so build? What would you create? This, what would you sell? By definition, self-belief comes from self-love. Right. That means the minute you fall in love with yourself is the day the world will fall in love with you. Right. It is the point is unless you can love yourself, how can someone else love you when you can't believe in yourself? Why would someone else believe in you? So to me, the belief is an internal mechanism. When you're constantly looking for someone else's approval, you have given them the remote control of your happiness. Right. So that you should never, ever look for other people's approval. You should share your genius. You should share your skills. You should share the, you know, what God-given gift you have with everyone else, but not look to them to actually fulfill you. I love it. People saying nuggets in the live chat. We've got Naveen's nuggets here. This is great. Uh, so you talked about yeah. de democratization yes. and demonetization and... Yeah. Making money, 
not not you know the, the whole orgasm yeah. analogy. So how do we demonetize something what, and so make money building every something time big? You demonetize something; it creates opportunity as a catalyst to build to solve a problem that is still remains unsolved, where there is still a monetization to be had until you demonetize that, and that creates a foundation for the next problem to be solved that you can actually create a business around. And when you solve that, you demonetize that, and you create a next platform. So it's really every single time you solve one problem that helps you actually build the next set of higher higher level problems that you can solve. Ultimately, until the world runs out of problems to solve, remember what happens is when you are poor, all you want is a car. When you have a car, all you want is a goddamn parking <laughs> for a car, right? <laughs> My point is, it doesn't matter what you have in life. You always have the next problem that you have to solve. That means every single solution ends up simply creating yet another problem that you can solve. How do we get back to a place of happiness just inside of that? Yeah. Because yeah. you've accomplished a ton. And yeah. so, you know, the problems multiply as you get bigger. Yeah. And, and yet you're still happy every day. Yeah. And bringing it, at least every time I've seen you, it's happy energy. You make me smile. How do we maintain that level of happiness as opposed to just wanting more and finding All new problems? Things that inherently brings you joy, right? And that joy comes from inside you that you're doing the things that you are set out to do. Or if I may use the religious thing, you're doing God's work. This is what you're sent on earth to do. And when you find that purpose, And there is no bigger purpose in life to then make someone else happy. And when you do that, in turn, it makes you happy because you're doing things that you actually set out to do. We as humans, doing things for others or taking care of others is actually built into our DNA. Remember, we used used to live in tribes in savannas of Africa. And we knew if our tribe died, we would die. And it was up to us to take care of each other so our tribe would survive. And that's literally, it's just a matter of us finding that tribe that takes care of each other, not just ourselves, but each other. I love it. The the other thing I love about your message and your story is you always seem to attack things as an outsider where you come into industries that you know nothing about, take a beginner's mind, and then just revolutionize them where most people are too afraid because, oh, I didn't go to school for this, or I don't, yeah. I don't have the background, and my family's not here. Talk about the importance of just your Absolutely. model, I guess, and of coming in as an outsider. Is once you become expert at something, you become incrementalist, or in my book, it, you become useless. In a sense that you can be 10% better than someone else in the world, but you will never be 10 times better than someone else in the world. To be 10 times better, you have to fundamentally challenge the foundation of what experts have taken it for granted. That means expert becomes expert by actually accumulating the knowledge that they believe is, un, uh, you know, that is what is they've taken it for granted, which is what makes them an expert. When you come from outside the industry, you're able to say, what if that is not true? What if you can fundamentally challenge that? And then suddenly you are able to rethink, reinvent, and you can be 10 times better than anyone else in the world. And that's literally happens in every industry. If you look at today's disruptive industries, there is never a single example where insiders actually disrupted the industry, right? You look at the taxi industry, not by, done by some, somebody in the taxi, it was done by Uber, hotel industry disrupted by Airbnb. And you can now look at the automotive industry done by Tesla, not by somebody Ford or GM, right? Similarly, the you know space exploration being done by entrepreneurs from internet, not somebody from NASA or aerospace, Boeing or McDonald's, right? And that literally happens in everything in our healthcare world. It's not being done by hospitals or doctors or someone. It's being done by entrepreneurs like us who go out and say, what if we can prevent the illness from happening in the first place rather than actually take care of it when you get sick? That's amazing. And, and what a great segue, because you've got a great company called Viome. Oh and I've got, I just got this sent to me. So I, I have my, it's, it's still unopened. You know, I'm waiting. I was waiting to talk to you before I went through this. Uh, so, yeah. so tell us about Viome, yeah. your big moonshot. And then, so and then what am I holding? Viome, the fundamental belief of Viome was, what if we can understand everything that's happening inside your body? 
tell you what is going on. So we can tell you, hey, uh, Evan, your biological age is this, despite your chronological age. This is your immune health. This is your gut health. This is your cellular health. This is your mitochondrial health. And it's not like now, enjoy. Then we tell you, hey, Evan, you shouldn't be eating broccoli because your sulfide production is too high because sulfide production is inflammatory and it requires a sulfate, which broccoli and cabbage and processed sprout have. Don't eat spinach because your oxalate metabolism is not very good and spinach contain a lot of oxalate. Or you need, you don't need to be taking vitamin B3 because your uric acid production is high. Or don't take curcumin, even though everyone thinks curcumin is healthy. For you, it's not very good because your bile acid production is too high. But you do need, so you, here are the foods you should be eating and here is why. Here are the foods you should be avoiding and here is why. Here are the supplements you don't need, and here is what you do need every day. You need 22 milligram of elderberry. You need 27 milligram of amylase. You need 29 milligram of berberin. And guess what? We make those capsules with only those ingredients in that dosage for each individual every month. So as your body changes, we can automatically adjust your supplements that your body needs. And amazing things happen, Evan. We now have over 325,000 people who have analyzed their things. And we showed that within four to six months when people do our follow or take our supplements and follow our food guidance, suddenly their diabetes comes down. We showed that HbA1c came down by 30%. Their depression comes down by 36% measured by PHQ-9. Their anxiety came down by 32% measured by a GAD-7. Or their IBS score measured by IBS SSS came down by 40%. These are the things without drugs. These are the things using food as a medicine. This is what Hippocrates wanted us to do. Let food be thy medicine, let thy medicine be the food. And that's literally what we are doing is there is no such thing as universal healthy food. And knowing what is good for you is actually, it's not about just because it's green is good for you. Green actually may be bad for you. So it's literally knowing what your body needs right now. And as your body changes, we adjust your food. And that is the only way you can live healthier. So idea is not to live forever. Idea is to live healthy as long as you live. And I love the customized approach to it because yep. if you went to your doctor and, and said, hey, broccoli or yep. spinach is bad for yep. me, nobody, nobody, would, yes. <laughs> nobody would agree. But it might be. You know, it Actually, might be no, good it, for 95% of people, but for that 5%. Spinach, well, at least in our data shows... Almost 40% of the people, they are harmed by spinach. Almost one third of the people are harmed by broccoli, right? So it is really entirely, a lot of people are harmed by taking a lot of the things, food that we take, take it for granted, like curcumin, right? So if your bile acid is high, you shouldn't be taking turmeric or curcumin. So it really is individualized for each person. And what you have in your hold, uh, hand is you're holding the key to healthy life. This is the way to live healthy for long, long time. And then, you know, obviously what we learned from here, we are able to build the diagnostic test to be able to tell you when you actually have early signs of cancer, when you have early signs of IVD, when you have early signs of NASH or NAFLD or any other disease. And then our goal is to be able to come up with the drugs that we actually will cure the disease, not simply manage the disease, right? Today, the chronic disease is simply managed and you take a drug for the rest of your life. And our goal is to prevent the diseases from happening, diagnose them early, and then have a cure for the disease rather than simply manage them. I love it. And for the YouTube audience, check the link in the description below. We're going to link this up if you want to get your version of this, just like I'm about to go through it. So, so yeah. what's in here? I haven't opened it. Sure. So what what, have what's in here? here? What am I doing? A kit that as, once you open it up, it looks just like this. Imagine living in a world where illness is optional, right? Inside that, there is a way to actually a that. simple, easy product. There are two tests, you, uh, a touch of your stool and a few drops of your blood put in the test tube and inside you put, send it to us. And seven to 10 days later in your app, it tells you exactly what's happening in your body, what foods are good for you, what foods are bad for you and why, right? And that's, and by the way, what supplements, probiotics, prebiotics you need, vitamin, mineral, herbs, digestive enzymes, amino acids, probiotics, prebiotics, everything you get, right? And we make it so easy. There is no grossness in that. It's literally so easy to use 
And it is so simple. And that's why it's a more of a lifestyle product hmm. rather than a medical product that you may have. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's literally. I, I like it. It says, okay, yeah. two, collect, yeah. three, send, pretty easy. <laughs> how do, how do I get the blood? Finger, there's a lancet, you touch, and you, lancet, you press the lancet, few drops of blood, and there's a pipette, you touch the, a, a drop of blood, it takes two drops out, and you squeeze it in the tube, and you're done. Yeah. Wow, that's awesome. Okay, so so I mean, I'm going to do yeah. this. I'm, I'm going to document my journey and see what comes back. And I'm, oh, I'm nervous and excited to see it. what the results uh, and are. Hopefully, your biological age is uh, lower than your chronological age. Uh, mine is ten years lower, so I'm happy, man. I love it. And then, okay, yeah. so then what happens? So this gets sent to the lab. Reports come back. Uh, supplements yeah. are, are recommended. Food, you know, stop eating this, etc. You do, is this you something that, that no, you, so do you do every four to once six a month, month once a man. year? Uh, you do every four to six months. So you can see the changes for yourself, right? So you four can see, months. hey, this is what my score. Now look at this, right? So as you're not following or following your recommendation, you can see it for yourself. So it's not based on faith. I think it works. You can see the facts. So it's always is, you know, follow the science, follow the facts, not the faith. I love it. You and then, and then the results go to my app and, and the supplements is so something that then you sell or I'm finding somewhere else or what, what am I doing? Milligram of this, 30 milligram of that is very difficult, but we make it for you. So we can, you can buy it from us or you can get it from someone else if you want. I love it. Well, I'm, I'm going to go do this. We'll see what happens here. What, what was the, so what's so the, I'm what's the bio One day when we have no business to diagnose any person or any, any, any business to cure anything, that means we have succeeded in preventing all the diseases from happening. And that is the ultimate goal is that no one ever gets sick because they are actually are eating right nutrients, lowering their stress, sleeping well and working and, and having enough movement in their body so that they can actually live healthier forever. I love it. And, and what was the single biggest insight you got? A couple of things, a couple of things that I always thought were the healthy thing to eat because that's how I grew up eating almonds and almonds were turned out to be one of the worst things that happened because it causes me so much inflammation. Other thing was dairy. I mean, dairy was just an absolutely deadly thing. And when I stopped taking dairy, not only a last weight, I used to have all kinds of digestive issues. They're all gone, right? For my wife, they were slight, very different. For her, it was Things uh, the biggest problem for her was green leafy vegetables, that broccoli and cabbage and Brussels sprout. And she always just thought she was just lack of energy. And she thought that's just normal. And it turned out just by changing that diet, now she said she doesn't even need a nap because she's just full of energy, right? So what people tell us is they sleep better. They have better mood, depression, anxiety is gone. They no longer have acne or eczema or dry skin. People are telling us that, you know, all the digestive bloating, digest stomach ache, they're, they're all gone. So things that we used to think are different diseases or different symptoms, they are just simply the uh, inflammation in their body that's showing up as a different symptoms. It's funny how we yeah, take yeah. things like lack of energy yeah. or lots of inflammation yeah. and I just know. feel like that's, that's really normal. The amazing thing is unless you get better, you don't even know what better looks like. You just think it's normal. Like I'm 62. Yeah, of course, being tired at this time when you're working 15 hour days is normal. God, no, I'm actually now, I run up the stairs, two stairs at a time, and I'm 62. Imagine when I'm 70 and my biological age is 40, I'll be running, jumping up, the, climbing the mountains, right? And that's really the idea is to be able to do things you want to do, not the things you couldn't do. I love it. Well, the man is the Veen Jane. The company is Biome. Here's the kit. I'm going to go through the process myself. YouTube, there's a link in the description below. Naveen, any final right, words to uh, take us out on? Live your dream, dream to the fullest. Go out and do things that people think are crazy. And when they don't tell you that you're crazy, then you're not thinking big enough. So dream big and never be afraid to fail because you only fail when you give up. So in the meantime, keep pursuing your moonshot and never let anyone tell you that you can't do it. Thanks a lot. I love it. Levine Jane, everybody. Thank you, man. Thank you, man. Appreciate Talk you. you. Take care. Bye-bye. If you want to see the one-on-one -on -one I did with Deepak Chopra, check it out right there next to me. I think you'll love it. Continue to believe, and I'll see you there. Every thought you have is a magical lie. How do we live a life with zero physical or mental weakness?